How's it going guys? Vash here with another video blog and today we're going to be talking about a few things. Uh, stuff I'm actually working on and what I'm pretty happy to talk about stuff I've actually designed. So the first thing is um, I bought a few things this past week or actually the end of the last week and then stuff kind of trickled in this week. Um, so right now I'm actually currently working on my uh, original printer which is the ANET A8. Although I had the metal frame conversion, I took all the parts, put it on the metal frame, um, but the board kind of went bad. So I decided to replace the board and I bought the GTEC GT2560 board, which has really highly rated. It's actually a really good board from everything I've been reading. Um, has three uh, MOSFETs built on it. So what a lot of reviews are basically saying is that you don't need to have an external one. This board handles uh, the uh, amperage pretty well and then I also actually bought a new screen for the printer um, thing I like about this versus uh, this this actually has a cover over but this is the original screen for the anet is this guy right here this scroll wheel um, anybody who's used an anet probably knows is that these buttons are terrible um, so I basically went out and purchased this and this on Amazon was uh, $13 uh, so it was pretty inexpensive the other thing is is the motherboard the GTEC the GT2560 and that is actually being wired up on my uh, printer right now um, I'm having to redo the connectors on the ends and I'll just kind of show you there the, the JSD connectors and they're just these little guys here I don't know if you guys see that there's a bit of extra lighting my LED lights but you guys can kind of see but basically if you've wired up the printer you know what the connectors look like so I'm having to rewire quite a bit of it because some of the connectors that have two wires in them are on the three and some of them, the ones that need three are on two and it's just I'm just having to redo it um, but that's some of the stuff that I bought this week which is I'm just really happy about because I'll have both my printers up and running pretty soon so the next thing I'm going to talk about is some of the stuff I've actually designed. Um, so because I got the motherboard in and it's just kind of your basic motherboard that goes for the printer, um, I didn't have a case for it or it's not designed to go with this printer. So I was looking around trying to find um, different mounts for it or basically different designs for it, see if anybody had anything. And there's a few out there that I thought were pretty cool. But then I decided, I was just like, you know, why don't you try and design your own uh, case? So that's what I did. And I went through a few iterations. If you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, please do. Um, I'm Vash the 18th at, uh, on Instagram. But I went through and I designed a few different versions of the board. Now, the first one is this guy here. And this, this actual, uh, Motherboard mount is actually based on the actual specs of the uh, board off the wiki. So the exact measurements that they gave, I printed this based on, or designed this based on that and printed it based on that. And this came out pretty good. Uh, real quick print, didn't take that long. Um, but then I got the board in and I had printed this before I got the board. Actually, I printed it the day before I got the board. Then I got the board in and I measured the board the uh page uh says that it's 78 uh 78 millimeters wide and so i designed it to have 79 millimeters of uh give in there um and it turns out that the board i got is wider than the actual specs it was actually uh 81 millimeters wide so i was like damn can't use this but great thing is i went back into tinkercad and I redesigned it and made it a little bit wider. And <clears throat> basically, if you can see here, I made this so that it just snaps in. This actually has no screws to it, does not screw, except for what goes onto the frame of the printer. But basically just kind of sits in here and that snaps in and that's it. And if you looked at my Instagram, you guys will see it mounted on there. And I was just like really happy about that. Um, but then I thought about it, I was like, hey, I want a case for it. I want a full-on case 
So I spent a lot of time. Actually, I spent probably like a good like eight hours because I'm not good at designing anything. I'm not an engineer in any way, but I wanted to learn how to design stuff. So I went through the process of learning how to design and I made uh, my own case. And this is the first iteration of that. Now, this uh, here is based on this original design where it would just like snap in there. Uh, let me hold it correctly. It would just snap in here, but then I just printed out this case that goes around that and put a hole in the bottom for the wires to go in and at the top, so wires go out. And then also just the uh, parts for the metal frame that allows it to screw in. And I also printed it with ventilation so that air can get in and out. So it's not confined when it, the, the lid goes on top of it. But this is the first iteration of what I did and this came out pretty good but then after i printed it and saw it i realized there's a few mistakes and some stuff i wanted to redo um i i printed a lid or i designed a lid to go on this but i realized i put these uh parts where the uh m3 nuts go too t too high so um the lid doesn't go on it perfectly so i had to redo that i also realized that the base of this I, I designed it to be four millimeters and i realized that is just too thick of a base for this so i cut it down to two millimeters so i could reduce print time because this original print here the first time i set this up this took uh, about nine hours and i had uh and this was at 0.3 millimeter layer height uh because uh I realized I didn't need great detail on this, so I usually do it at 0.2 millimeter layer height, but I cut it down, to, or I increased it to 0.3 because this is just a functional print. It's not designed to be like any like shell piece or anything. So I made it three and it came out good, but I realized I needed to redesign that and fix it. So I did, and that version is actually on the frame. Actually, let me just grab it real quick. And that, ooh. That's not good, <laughs> um, but that's just holding in the motherboard and it just sits in here. There are no screws for this. It's just sitting in there, but there's a bunch of wires there and I'm rewiring it. So, but that's pretty much uh, the motherboard and that's kind of, I wouldn't say the final version of it, but I'll show you guys the designs of the motherboard um, coming up right now. So here's some of the designs. Uh, here's the first one. This is the case. So you guys kind of just get a better idea of how it looks. Um, so as you can see there, there's this little recess right there, or it's just a little bit lower than the cap. So I was able to actually uh, set this in there and then close it off once it's done. So that the, basically the top of the motherboard and the back of the motherboard is protected. Now you might be looking at these and wondering, what are all these like triangles? I just really wanted to create ventilation for it. Um, just, and just like the simplest design possible. I am not a master engineer or anything like that, but I wanted to make something that was ventilated instead of just like a straight closed um, design. Cause you want airflow, it's a motherboard, it gets heat, it can heat up. So you want to let air escape. So that's kind of what that is. And on the lid here, same thing and as you can see there we can kind of get that there's that little lip there and that just allows it to kind of just sit in there um and then this is actually the original design right here of the frame now this is well this is the second iteration versus the first one which was built to spec um i built this around the board that i actually got um but i've been using tinkercad a lot and this is such a great tool. If you're not using this, I absolutely highly recommend it. Um, I've said in the previous blogs, I use Fusion 360, or I'm, I'm going to, but I haven't done it yet. It's just I've gotten so used to using Tinkercad, and it's so simple uh, that I just keep using it. I eventually will get to Fusion 360 because there's some things I learned that just not able to do in here as far as the ease ease of it i've had to make very difficult uh, modifications so um and i've seen it in fusion 360 that was much easier to do so i'll eventually get there but for now this is great but yeah 
So this is what I've been working on and eventually if I don't find a file for it, I will be designing a case for this. Uh, just so I can basically put it on the front of the, I guess my i3 now, um, since I'm not using an ANET board anymore on that one. But basically it's just gonna replace this and basically do the same thing, except I'm gonna have this guy, which is so much better. But that's some of the stuff I'm working on right now. And, oh man, I've been printing pretty much every day, but here's a tip when it comes to printing. Uh, some people may know this. I imagine quite a few people know this, but for those who don't, um, when I originally printed this case and some of the other stuff, I normally do prints at 0.2 millimeter layer height. It's just kind of standard. It gets you good quality prints, good detail, um, and decent times. But uh, for ones that you don't need crazy detail on them, like you don't need that fine detail, go ahead and increase the layer height as if you can. Like for this one here, when I originally printed uh, this version of it, if this actually took um, about eight hours, about eight and a half hours, give or take. Um, but for the next one, um, I increased the layer height to 0.3 and it cut down the print time by quite a bit. And the great part is on this newer one that I have for the metal frame, it actually even reduced it down because I cut down the base of it from uh, four millimeters to two. So that just cut off uh, a lot of time. So check your prints. If you don't need great detail, go ahead and increase the layer height. Get, get the print done as fast as you can. There's no need for you to wait long time just because you wanna get good detail on something that honestly doesn't need good detail. It just, it's a, this is just a functional print. This is just designed to uh, do a single purpose. It's not a display piece or anything. Uh, so that's why I increased the layer height on it so I can get it done quicker and also to find out if it worked or not and which it did. Just increase your layer heights if you don't need great detail. If you do, go ahead and keep it low. But if you don't, don't.